Hopefully you had a chance to watch the video we did on hitching up a fifth wheel to a tow vehicle. And if you did, you'll know that the hitching up process was actually one of the very first things we did. Once we got hitched up, then we did a lot of safety checks after that. When it comes to unhitching, we're gonna show you a lot of the steps and precautions that we take before we unhitch. And believe it or not, the unhitching part is actually one of the very last steps that we do. And don't forget to tell them about the very first time we ever unhitched. Yeah, that was an eye opener. Yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> learned. <laughs>when it comes to unhitching our RV from our tow vehicle it's a very simple process however we always use our checklist and here's the reason why or some of the reasons why when we first get to a new location one of the very first things we do is we'll actually stop our tow vehicle get out of the truck and walk around our site and what we're doing this is kind of a safety check to be honest with you what we're doing is we're looking for anything that we could possibly hit or run over as we're back Backing into our site, Pipes, or poles, anything, yeah. uh, pick, patio tables. We moved, <laughs> pick, pick, slid, pick the yeah. tables out of the way, and we're looking for maybe a fire ring and maybe a small sign. Right. It's hard to see when you're actually backing up. So this is kind of one of the very first steps we do. We're, again, we're just kind of walking around our site, looking for anything, just trying to get familiar with the site. The next thing we do is we pick out a location on our site. It's the basically, ideal spot. Exactly. We want the <laughs> ideal spot on our site. Now, that may only be two or yeah. three feet one direction or two right. or three feet the other direction. But what we're trying to do, and, and you can't do this all the time, but for instance, if there's a fire ring on our site, maybe we want that fire ring towards the back door. If we have room, right. we don't want it next to our front door. Yeah. Or maybe they have a built-in picnic table that doesn't move. Maybe right. we want that in a certain location. So these are the kind of things that we're looking for. We're just looking really for the ideal spot. And don't forget that we'd like to be able to put our ramp down, of course, every yeah. single chance we get. Yeah, definitely. And we want to make sure we have the room to put our ramp down. We have yeah. been in spots where if we put our ramp down, with it, it could be sticking out into one of the yeah, streets. Yeah, we've actually been asked to move, yeah. to move a couple of feet or about a foot forward, I guess. So these are the kind of things that we're looking for, just general general stuff, and where do we want to put the RV on the side? Once we figure that out, that's when we'll go ahead and back up or do a pull through. We have a pull through site. We'll pull through and park the RV where we prefer to have it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that's where it's going to stay, right. but this is our initial attempt. Then we have a lot of check. This is where our checklist comes in. One of the very first things we do once we put the RV where we want it, we do a complete walk around of the RV. Again, we're looking. Uh, maybe like, uh, yeah, this isn't exactly where we thought it was going to be. The fire ring is yeah. maybe, oh, let's pull forward a couple of feet, or mm -hmm. this doesn't look right. Let's try to back it up. We're looking for things like that. Right. Uh, this is at a kind of a high level. Mm -hmm. Then we get into a little bit more detail. Now what we're going to look for, before we unhitch anything, we want to make sure our water hose will reach the spigot. Okay, the last thing you want to do is unhook from your tow vehicle just to realize your water hose won't reach. Also, the electric cable, and it will actually sometimes just go ahead and roll the electric cable yeah. out at this point. Even if we have to move the RV a little bit, the cable's going to be there. It's going to just be a matter of moving it a little right. bit. So we look for our water hose, we look for our electrical cable, just as important, we look at our sewer lines. Right. We, now we carry about 40 feet of sewer lines, so we, ha we do have plenty. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, we'd only hook up one restroom if we had to. But you do want to check, make sure you have enough sewer lines to, to get to the sewer. Last, last couple things we check for, we check for our slide outs. Yeah. I have been in some tight situations yeah. where we would, if, the, if we didn't check this, our slide outs would have hit either an electrical outlet or uh, a water spigot. Yeah. or something like that. So or that's, our neighbors. <laughs> or our neighbors, yeah, we've been in some pretty tight spots. <laughs> so again, that's something else you want to check. And then as a bonus also, we always like to check our awnings. Always, it's a yeah. little bit harder to, to tell without putting them out, but you, you can get a pretty good idea. So again, once we back in, one of the first things we do is we check, make sure we have enough water hose where we're at, electrical cords, sewer hoses, mm -hmm. make sure our awnings mm -hmm. can come out all the way, Slide. and also our slides can come out all the way. 
Once we get those steps completed, the next step we do is to check just how level the RV is. And this brings us back to our story. When we first purchased our RV, we purchased it from Lazy Days over in Tampa. We drove it straight across the state of Florida to the east coast of Florida to a campground we were staying at for about a week just to get things loaded up and the RV ready to travel. We have never pulled an RV before and we've never backed up an RV before. So we were pretty nervous and we did have a few people watching us. Luckily for us, we did get the RV backed into our site really without a problem. We were, we were pretty happy at this point. We, we did good, people are watching, no, no major mistakes until we went to disconnect the, the tow vehicle from the RV. We disconnected the tow vehicle. We went to set the auto level for the RV and actually the right tires of the RV, once it was level, were probably about three inches off the ground. And there was just no way I could leave the RV like that. So I had to reconnect the tow vehicle to the RV. We moved the RV slightly over on the spot a little bit and did it all over again. Now, luckily this time we had some blocks we put, um, underneath the right tires so we got it the correct way. But this was really a, a, a kind of a major lesson. Now nothing got hurt, but it did take a lot of time. So we always check our levels on the RV and try to get the RV as level as possible before we ever disconnect a tow vehicle from the RV. Once we complete those steps, we chalk the tires or block the tires and we finally get to unhitch the RV from the truck. Now that the RV is in place and the tires have been chalked, the next thing we need to do is relieve some of the pressure off the back of the pickup truck. The way we do this is we're going to extend the front landing gear of the RV. And really all we're trying to do is just to get the RV to come slightly off the back of the fifth wheel hitch. Again, we're just trying to relieve some of the pressure. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to extend the front landing gear. We're going to watch the front of the RV. And then we're going to stop as soon as we can see there's a little gap between the RV and the fifth wheel hitch. Once we relieve the pressure off the back of the pickup truck, the next step for us is to put our tailgate down, disconnect the electrical cord, and our breakaway cable. So tailgate down. Now a couple things with this as well. When we disconnect our electrical cord and our breakaway cable, I don't just leave these laying in the back of the truck. I like to try to stow them. And one of the reasons, or a couple of reasons for that is, I really want to protect my connections to the electrical cable. The other thing is, I want to get my electrical cable and my breakaway cable off the tail of, or the bed of the truck. The reason for that is when I go and pull this truck away from the RV, I really don't want to take a chance on my electrical cable getting caught maybe in between the tailgate and the bed of the truck and then yanking it out or breaking something. Same way with the breakaway cable. So we always like to stow the electrical cable up here. And I'll usually go through this a couple of times. It keeps it up high enough. I also, I also make sure this end of the electrical cable is facing down just to help keep some moisture out of it if I can. Breakaway cables the same way. I'll try to either wrap this around somewhere up here. I can't get to it right now. Now I'll fix that a little bit later. Once we pull out, I'll actually wrap it around the assembly there. But the main thing is nothing's touching the bed of the truck. I really don't want when I pull this truck out of here for something to get snagged and break. So we're good here. The next step is to open up our fifth wheel hitch and pull away. Now that the electrical cable and the breakaway cable is disconnected from the RV, the next thing we're going to do is to remove the safety pin from our lock bar and open up the lock bar. And at this point, we're pretty much free of the RV. So we're going to pull the safety pin out. Safety pin is out. And now we're going to open up the lock bar. And now our lock bar is open, so we are completely free of this RV. The jaws are open, the kingpin is basically free to slide back and forth. Next thing is for us to pull the truck away from the RV. 
Now that we're completely disconnected from the RV, we're gonna go ahead and pull away from the RV. Now while I do this, even though we stowed everything, Dina's still gonna stay there back by the RV and watch as I pull away, just in case one of our cables fell down and got caught in between the bed of the truck and the tailgate, anything like that, she's back there in case she needs me to stop. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good understanding of the process that we take when we disconnect our RV from our tow vehicle. Again, we do a complete walk around when we first pull into a new site. We make sure our electrical cables work. We make sure the water is up. We have enough water hose. We, our sewer hoses are long enough. We have room for our slides to come out and our awnings to come out. Once we do all that, we chalk, chalk up the RV. Make sure it's fairly level, get as, as close to level as possible, and then we start the process of disconnecting the RV. We hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and the red bell, and please leave us any comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. And remember, always live life to the fullest.